Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. Somebody sent me this file, and this is a pretty pixelized file, and it traces not too good or not too bad, but it's the, the cat and the rabbit and the beaver don't trace very good at all. I've already gone to bitmap and resampled it to 300 dots per inch. So we're just gonna go to trace, outline trace, clip art. Won't take just a second. Your trace copy should always be on top. Now, if you look, the, in the cat doesn't look like a cat too much. On there, and the rabbit's kind of uh, not too good anyway. But there's a way, you know, if everything tr else traced good, the beaver's not very good, but we could redo it. So I just left click, right click, and I'm just going to take a two point line, and I'm going to use the virtual segment delete key, and I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to take the cat out. Now, I've gone to the internet. I picked a cat. Of course, I, I just picked a house cat. Uh, that was probably a bobcat, but we could you could change it a little bit, pick another one, but I just picked it. Let's go to, uh, let's pick it, and I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just going to trace it, outline, trace, clip art. Now, yours is going to be under bitmap. It traced it that quick. I always take a yellow box trick, put a yellow box, and here's why. We're going to make that yellow box look yellow, go to object, order, back a page, and we got a little bit of white there that in a plasma cutter would really, and even an engraver, if you're going to engrave this, would happen to hurt you a little bit or could. Go to group and ungroup and just take that white away just by hitting delete. Sorry, my calculator's really close. Now, we're going to mirror this cat. Now, even though it's a house cat, it's a cat, we're going to take his tail off. And then do the same thing to the bunny rabbit. Just uh, trace it, trace, outline, trace, clip art. And it does it that fast. Now, there should be no white because there, there was no interior. But we'll put it in front of here anyway just to make sure. We need to make that really little. Now, we're going to take our house cat. And I keep calling it a house cat. We're going to make it quite a bit smaller. And we're going to put it in. And we're going to lose his tail. And if you put his leg maybe down, he'd look more like a cat. Uh, I made the rabbit really little. And then just left click, right click. And let's start deleting some of these lines. And also the beaver needs to be replaced. But you, know, you could just type in beaver. And we'll get rid of some of these lines. And then just take my new line away and you've got a, a cat in there. And then take the rabbit and I could have maybe, you know what, I could still make the cat bigger. I don't really like doing this after I've done it, but you could put it and we can close all those gaps. You could actually make it a little bit bigger still and have that leg touching that leg. Then let's take the rabbit and let's make him quite a bit bigger and left click, right click. And then it's just a, a deciding what lines to cut out. We'll take a virtual. Now, those two lines were not touching, so as you can probably see in just a second. Now, if you can't ever grab a line, grab it with your pick tool, go to object and group and ungroup it. Then you can grab it with your shape tool. That line should have cut without cutting anything else off. Now, we're gonna need to join, join those curves we're going to take this line and just put it in this line. All I'm doing is getting rid of some lines. Now, on the bottom, the rabbit can actually go um, to the outward piece of metal. Now, like that joint needs to be corrected, so we're going to hold down the shift key and select that one. I've got a hot key for gap tolerance, and all you have to do is go to Windows, Dockers, Join curves and there's there's the same thing I'm using. I've just got a hotkey because I do it so much and I love it. We can grab both those and hit J and just hit OK and it's closing all the gaps. That one, then we could close some more, but let's see if it, well, one more thing we need to do is, this will actually help you in the long run, especially with a plasma cutter to make it a little bit stronger. I think I have all the leaks for all the ones fixed. So we're gonna take a box, 
just to make sure something doesn't leak and that nothing leaked. Now, what I want to do before that, this thing is, well, let's see how big it is. The, um, Ele or elephant. Buffalo is actually just three inches, so we're going to set our nudge factor to four. We're going to take the smart fill tool and fill that in. Now we've got everything but the bear's eye, and we need to, you know what? That eye is not going to stay there because that's, that's a void spot. So the eye doesn't really matter because only the black is going to be the metal. So the bear is not going to have an eye in this situation. Now, if you engraved it, you could do that. But if you see what I'm thinking or I'm talking about, the cat looks better, the rabbit looks much better, and then you can left click, right click, and you have a cutout of a, a um, pretty cool. Let's fill it back in and kind of look at it, what it actually looks like if it was cut out. Put it over here. And if you look at it, you've got a, a buffalo, a bear, an elk, a wolf or a coyote, a, a bird, a beaver, a rabbit, a cat, and a squirrel, all in one picture. So everything white will be gone out of the piece of metal. And only the black will be the metal. Or if you engraved it, it would be a pretty cool event because this would be all the wood. Anyway, I hope that helped them a little bit. And so what I'm what I made the video for is if parts of it engrave good, you can replace parts. Like I would definitely replace that beaver and maybe clean up the squirrel a little bit. I hope that helped a little bit. Thank you for watching.